Welcome to the training on the WKCE Accommodations for English Language Learners, or ELLs. It is the district's hope that this training will provide you with the knowledge needed to ensure that the appropriate accommodations are provided in the correct manner to ELLs for the 2012 WKCE. The objectives for this training are that participants will be able to determine which ELLs are eligible for accommodations on the WKCE, and participants will be able to assign appropriate accommodations to ELLs. There are several laws protecting the rights of ELLs to receive assessment accommodations. The Elementary and Secondary Education Act, ESEA, requires each state to allow appropriate accommodations for ELLs on state academic assessments. These accommodations are intended to help such assessments yield accurate information on what these students know and can do in academic content areas without bias from their English language proficiency. Wisconsin state statutes also protect accommodation use for ELLs. The law allows for the operators of a school to permit a student who is an ELL to be examined in his or her native language or change the format and administration of an assessment for a student who is an ELL. Any ELL with an English language proficiency level of 1 through 5 is eligible for ELL accommodations on the WKCE. This includes students who are currently receiving ELL services or are enrolled in an ELL class. It also includes students who are not currently receiving ELL services or enrolled in an ELL class. And finally, students who are refusals. Please note, for refusal students, you need to confer with the parents before ELL accommodations are used on the WKCE. Students who are in English language proficiency level six, meaning that they have exited the ELL program, are not eligible for ELL accommodations on the WKCE. Assessment accommodations for ELLs involve changes to testing procedures, testing materials, or the testing situation in order to allow ELLs to participate meaningfully in the WKCE. They are intended to provide access to test content and enable students to overcome language barriers. Effective accommodations for ELLs address the unique linguistic and sociocultural needs of the students without altering what the test is intending to measure. There are three types of ELL accommodations available on the WKCE. The first one is direct linguistic support in English. The second type of accommodation is direct linguistic support in native language. And the final type is indirect linguistic support. The first type of accommodations are ones that provide direct linguistic support in English. An example would be English language reference material. This is providing spelling assistance or spell check device. This is not allowed on the language arts or writing test. Scripted oral English. This is reading questions and content to students. Once again, not allowed on the reading test. When reading questions and content to students, the test administrator must read in a pace and tone that is appropriate for each individual student. Careful attention must be given such that no changes in tone or inflection are detectable, which might indicate a correct answer. An example would be, if this was the question you were reading, which word is a synonym for happy? A. Sad. B. Gleeful, C, busy, D, forgetful. You can see I raised my voice on answer B, the correct answer. Please make sure that you read in a tone that gives no indication of the correct answer. Students may direct the test administrator to reread a portion of a passage, test question, or answer choice as needed. Also, audio recordings of the test passages and questions is an allowable accommodation. 
but once again, this is not allowed on the reading test. Test administrators must ensure that audio recordings are deleted upon the completion of testing for security purposes. Another example of direct linguistic support in English is clarification in English. This is where a test administrator would simplify, explain, or clarify the test directions, or have the student reread and or restate the directions in his or her own words. Test directions refer to any portion of the WKCE test booklet where the word directions appear in a shaded colored box. In addition, test directions refer to anything that the test proctor reads aloud to the class from the WKCE test administration manual. An example would be the bold text following the say icon. Directions may not be expanded. Another example of a clarification in English is an audio recording of test items that is simplified the wor to the words not related to the content or vocabulary. This is not allowed on the language arts or reading test. The test administrator must ensure that the audio recordings are deleted upon completion of testing for security purposes. A final example of clarification in English is reading the test items that is simplified for words not related to content or vocabulary. Once again, this is not allowed on the language arts or reading tests. The test administrator providing the accommodation of simplified English should be familiar with the content area that is being tested. An example of simplifying the English. This is from a fifth grade released item. The actual WKCE question is, the sales receipt, receipt below shows the groceries that John purchased from the supermarket. What is the estimated cost of John's groceries? Reading this question in simplified English would sound like this. The receipt below shows the food that John bought from the store. Estimate how much money John spent on the food. In that example, the word groceries was simplified to food and supermarket was simplified to store. Estimate remained in both question. The word estimate was the part of the standard that was being assessed. That word cannot be simplified or explained. Another example of direct linguistic support in English is oral responses. This is where a student indicates their response orally to a scribe. A scribe, a person that a student is dictating orally to, may be provided when a student's ELL status prevents them from writing their answer. This accommodation will rarely be used for ELL status. For an English language learner, it would be used more if there were an injury or a documented disability. A scribe must be impartial and should allow adequate time for students to review their responses. All scribing needs to be done with a number two pencil. If it is not, the responses will not be scored. Another example of oral responses is where the student records their responses using an audio or video device. If this is done, the test administrator would then transcribe the student's responses into the WKCE test booklet, or the student themselves would watch and listen to his or her recorded responses and transcribe them into the WKCE test booklet. The next type of accommodation for ELLs are ones that provide direct linguistic support in a student's native language. The first example is dual language reference material. This is where you provide a bilingual word-to-word -word translation. The reference material must not provide any definitions of the words. This accommodation is not allowed on language arts, reading, or writing tests. Native language English dictionaries is an example of something that does not provide a definition. Some students will have pocket dictionaries like this. 
If students are used to using a website to get a translation of a word, the teacher must monitor that the site does not provide a definition. Another example of a direct linguistic support in the native language is students' response in native language. This is where a student responds either orally or in writing in his or her native language. Then a translator would translate the student response into English and then scribe an oral response or transcribe a written response into the scorable test booklet. This accommodation is not allowed on a writing test. Regarding the translator, a qualified translator and interpreter needs to have the following qualifications. They must have mastery of the target language and dialect, familiarity with both cultures, an extensive general and academic vocabulary in both language, languages, and the ability to express their thoughts clearly and concisely in both languages. A translator who scribes student responses from their native language into English should translate word for word to the extent possible for all content areas except writing. Remember for writing, the student must dictate in English. Translation is not allowed. Transcriptions of a student's responses must be written verbatim, including spelling, formatting, punctuation, etc. Test security must be maintained when using this accommodation. After answers are transcribed, all paper copies of student work must be returned with non-scorable test materials. The next slide are more direct linguistic supports in the native language. For written translations, the translator can provide written translation of the directions into a student's native language. Or a translator may provide written translation of test items into a student's native language. This is not allowed on the reading or language arts sections of the WKCE. Student responses must be, score, must be placed in the scorable test booklet. If you are using Spanish, you must use the DPI provided WKCE translation scripts. Hmong is available for directions only. Once again, regarding directions, test directions refers to any portion of the WKCE test booklet where the word directions appear in a shaded or colored box. In addition, test directions refer to anything that the test proctor reads aloud to the class from the WKCE test administration manual. Example, the bold text following the say icon. Directions may not be expanded. A qualified translator needs to have the following qualifications. Mastery of the target language and dialect, familiarity with both cultures, extensive general and academic vocabulary in both languages, and the ability to express thoughts clearly and concisely in both languages. The scripts that DPI provides are designed to be used in different ways. For example, they can be used independently by a student, side by side with the English version of the WKCE next to them. Or a proctor can read the script in Spanish as a student completes the test in English. Or a proctor can read the script as the student completes the test in their native language. Scripts will look similar to the English version and follow the same page numbering system for each form. But note, in some instances, an item may not fit on the same page as the English copy. This item will be continued on the next page and will retain the same page number as the original. Graphics are not included in the scripts unless necessary. Students will have to look back to the English copy of the WKCE in most cases. Another example of direct linguistic support in the native language is using scripted oral translations, but only the DPI provided scripts. For this accommodation, 
A test proctor may read aloud the DPI provided Spanish or Hmong translations of the test directions in the test administration manual. Once again, the requirements are the same as when this accommodation was provided in English. Reading the test items aloud using the DPI provided Spanish scripts. This accommodation is not allowed on the language arts are reading tests. When you are reading questions and content to students, remember the test administrator must read in a pace and tone that is appropriate for the individual student. Careful attention must be given so that no changes in tone or inflection are detectable which might indicate the correct answer. Think back to the example of B. Students may direct the test administrator to reread a portion of the passage, test question, or answer choice as needed. A final example would be providing an audio recording of the test items using the DPI provided Spanish scripts. Once again, this is not allowed on the language arts are reading tests. Remember, Test administrators must ensure that audio recordings are deleted upon completion of testing for security purposes. A final example of direct linguistic support in the native language is sight translation for languages other than Spanish. For this accommodation, a proctor would interpret the directions into a student's native language they would simplify, explain, or clarify the test directions in a student's native language, or provide an audio recording of the directions interpreted into a student's native language. Please remember everything previously mentioned regarding directions and what makes a qualified translator and an interpreter is the same for languages other than Spanish. Also, any audio recordings done in a language other than Spanish also need to be destroyed. Continuing with sight translation for languages other than Spanish, audio recordings of test items interpreted into a student's native language is an allowable accommodation. However, it is not allowed on the language arts or reading test. And finally, Interpreting the test passages and questions into a student's native language, student responses must be documented in the scorable test booklet. This again is not allowed on language arts or reading tests. This accommodation is really for students who have content area knowledge in their native language. For example, if you have a Somali student at your school who recently arrived from a refugee camp and has had no previous schooling, this most likely would not be a good accommodation for them. They have had no previous schooling in their native language. But if your school has a Lao speaking student who came with years of schooling in the Lao language, this may be a great accommodation for them. Unfortunately, we cannot provide interpreters and translators for all languages. A third type of accommodation available to English language learners are those that have indirect linguistic support. An example of this type of accommodation would be extra time. That is where you provide extra time for any timed test as long as a test session is completed within the same day the student started the session. It is important to note that if you allow any breaks during an extended testing time, that test security must be maintained during these breaks. Students must not be allowed to use any form of wireless communication during the planned breaks. Another example of an indirect linguistic support is having the student read aloud to self. When selecting accommodations on the WKCE for English language learners, make sure you work with a team of educators to select the accommodations based on specific individual needs in each content area.
Make sure you are familiar with the types of accommodations that can be used. You should have a copy of the 2012 Assessment Accommodations Matrix for English Language Learners. At the end of this presentation, there will be a website where you can download a copy of that matrix. Don't assume that all accommodations remain the same year after year. As students gain their English proficiency, the accommodations will change. And also, do not provide an assessment accommodation for the first time on the day of the WKCE. Accommodations provided during the WKCE should also be used by a student during instruction. They should not first be introduced to a stu student during the WKCE testing time. Now, some accommodations are unique to the WKCE, such as using the state-provided Spanish scripts. If you use this accommodation, it should be practiced ahead of time with the released items. When selecting accommodations for English language learners, you need to consider their background, language proficiency, level of literacy, and their access to instruction in native language. All accommodations for an English language learner student should be determined by a team of educators looking at all of these considerations. We are going to look at two different students to see how the previously mentioned considerations will help you select appropriate accommodations for English language learners on the WKCE. Here is example number one. Roberto. He is recently arrived in the eighth grade. His language proficiency, he's a level one. He reads at grade level in Spanish, and right now he's in bilingual instruction. Consulting with a team of educators who know Roberto, some recommendations for accommodations for him on the WKCE may be to use a side-by-side -side script Having Roberto write math constructed response items in Spanish and have the translator transcribe those responses in the WKCE booklet and providing Roberto with extra time. Example number two is Isabel. Isabel has been in the United States for five years. She's now in fifth grade. Her English language proficiency is she's a level 4.6. Isabel is literate in Spanish and she reads one grade level below in English. Right now Isabel is in a 50% English, 50% Spanish bilingual program. Some possible recommendations for Isabel would be to offer her a side-by-side -side script as a reference, to read the questions in content in English and clarify in Spanish if needed, and provide Isabel with extra time. All accommodations provided to an English language learner on the WKCE must be recorded on the back side of the test booklet. The assessment accommodations matrix for English language learners, the updated 2012 version, is available on the DPI website at the address shown below. If you have any questions regarding the WKCE accommodations for English language learners, please direct them to your ELL program support teacher, department chair, or to the ELL office at DOB. Thank you.